Mm. Did you guys know that caffeine is actually a drug and it's one of the most widely used drugs in the whole world? Well, why is it a drug? Let me explain. A drug is any substance that alters the chemical processes in the body. Well, caffeine does just that. When we tired, we take, we drink a cup of coffee and it makes us feel mentally alert. It increases our concentration and our energy levels by stimulating our adrenal glands to release adrenaline, which makes us feel ready to go. But let's talk about this chapter, which talks about the medicinal drugs. So first of all, we've got antibiotics. Antibiotics is produced mostly from microbiological sources, such as fungi, for example. Antibiotics help our body fight uh, pathogens such as bacteria by inhibiting the bacterium cell wall synthesis for one. If there's no cell wall, the bacterium can't protect itself and the pathogen gets destroyed. This way we use the fungi's uh, defense mechanism. We produce medicine from this. When antibiotics get constantly used, bacteria can actually develop resistance to antibiotics. And this is because bacteria multiply so quickly, so they'll divide and reproduce every couple of, some even minutes. And when they do that, they share their genetic information with each other. So say for example, you get sick with a, a disease caused by a bacterial infection. The doctor prescribes you antibiotics. You start taking the antibiotics and these antibiotics start killing off these bacteria. But now you start feeling better after a couple of days, so you decide, you know what, I'll just stop taking my antibiotics, I am better. Meanwhile, there are still some bacteria in your body that have not been killed, that are alive. And these bacteria have been exposed to the antibiotics. And when you stop taking them and stop taking the antibiotics and you don't kill off all the bacteria, the, the bacteria that remain, that stay alive, develop a resistance to this specific type of antibiotics and when they reproduce and multiply they pass this genetic information that allows them to become resistant onto other bacteria in this way antibiotic resistance bacteria develop and we now sit with a big problem where there's bacteria that are resistant to almost all the most powerful antibiotics that are known to man and if we can't find a way to stop these antibiotic resistant bacteria, we could possibly go back to an age where people die from colds and flu and other bacterial infections that we easily recover from. When we speak of drugs, you often think of street drugs. One of these which is heroin, which is a powerful, powerful depressant drug which produces euphoric effects which means that you basically you feel good and you're on a high so how does this work well heroin gets metabolized to morphine in the brain and morphine can bind to receptors in our brain and when they bind to the receptors endorphins are released these are our feel-good hormones this also happens when you eat chocolate for example that's why when you eat chocolate you generally feel good but the difference is heroin can deplete the natural source of endorphins and cause serious imbalances in the brain people who come addicted to heroin can't actually function normally without the drug at a, after a certain period of time that they've taken the drug heroin now another common drug is alcohol Alcohol is actually a toxin and it's very toxic to our liver. It is also a depressant which means that it slowed up, slows down our reaction time, it slows down the decision making uh, processes in the brain and our reflexes also get inhibited by the use of alcohol. Another drug that's extremely prevalent in the sporting scene is anabolic steroids. Anabolic steroids basically increase protein synthesis which means that it helps the body to uh, bind amino acids together to produce proteins and our muscular tissue is made up of protein so it helps to increase lean muscle mass which in turn increases strength and performance but there is a downside to anabolic steroids steroids also increases the heart muscle which sounds like a good thing but it's actually not 
If the heart muscle increases in size, it actually becomes weakened. People who take anabolic steroids can actually suffer from conditions such as heart failure later on in life because their heart is not able to sufficiently supply their body with oxygenated blood. Lastly, we've also got tobacco which contains nicotine and tar. Nicotine damages blood vessels. Um, it decreases the elasticity of the vessels. This leads to hypertension. Tar in the cigarettes also contain over 50 known carcinogens and a carcinogen is a chemical that is known to cause cancer. Carbon monoxide is also produced and carbon monoxide binds to our red blood cells and prevents the red blood cell from picking up oxygen. So think of your red blood cell as a taxi. So the taxi can pick up either oxygen or it can pick up carbon monoxide. The difference is though that when our red blood cell picks up oxygen, the red blood cell takes it to the tissues where it is needed and oxygen is released. Carbon monoxide though is a very bad one. It gets into the red blood cell and it binds irreversibly, meaning that it stays in a taxi. So the red blood cell can drive around the body, carbon monoxide doesn't leave, which means that taxi red blood cell is useless because it can't pick up any oxygen to take to the muscle or pick up any carbon dioxide to release. This way carbon monoxide decreases the oxygen carrying capacity of our red blood cells. All right, so this was a short chapter, so let's go take a look at some past paper problems. Question 17, what is a pathogen? Well, we know a pathogen is something that causes disease, but more specifically, is it a virus, bacteria, or fungi? Well, a pathogen can be all of those because it's not specific, it's just something that causes a disease. Thus, the answer is B. Question 24. Which row shows the effects of increasing adrenaline release? Adrenaline is our fight or flight hormone. Thus, it increases our heart rate, which increases our pulse rate. It also increases respiratory rate, which is our breathing rate. So, it increases that as well. But now, does, what does it do to the pupil? Does it narrow our pupil or widen the pupil? Adrenaline widens the pupil because it acts on the sympathetic nervous system. Thus, our answer here is D. Question 26. A patient is suffering from an infection. Her doctor prescribes an antibiotic. One week later, the infection is still present. What could be the reason for this? Well, let's take a look at the options. It was the correct antibiotic for this infection. That is not correct because if it was the correct antibiotic, the infection would have cleared up. So we can rule out A. B is the pathogen was a virus. That is a valid answer because antibiotics only act on bacteria, not viral infections. C is the pathogen was resistant to the antibodies. And if you read this quickly, you might think that this is a correct answer as well, or a viable option. But note that this is antibodies and not antibiotics. If the pathogen was resistant to antibiotics, this would have been a valid answer. But it is antibodies and pathogens is given antibiotics, not antibodies. So we can rule out C. D. The patient was resistant to the antibiotic. Well, the patient can't be resistant to the antibiotic. So our only valid answer here is B. This question is a good example that you need to read your questions carefully, look at the words and don't jump to conclusions. Um, make sure that you see the, different, the differences. Make sure that you watch out for trick questions or areas that they would try to catch you out. Question 5. Bacteria can be grown on nutrient agar in petri dishes. The main nutrients in the agar are glucose and amino acids. The bacteria reproduce asexually to form colonies. Each colony is formed from one bacterium. So 1a. Explain why glucose and amino acids are included in the agar medium. So the agar is the jelly-like substance on which the bacteria is grown on agar plates. 
uh, glucose is added because glucose is our energy source it provides the energy or the food needed for the bacteria to grow amino acids are required to make proteins and proteins are the basic fundamental building blocks of life the bacteria needs amino acids to reproduce and grow a2 describe how bacteria reproduce asexually so asexual reproduction in of bacteria involves the bacteria duplicating the genetic material so one cell which has one nucleus will replicate its genetic material and replicate the nucleus basically and this cell will split into two cells each with the identical genetic material this is a process called binary fission so here we have a long question a microbiologist collects bacteria from a kitchen which was suspected to be responsible for an outbreak of food poisoning the microbiologist spreads the bacteria on nutrient agar and let them reproduce to form colonies the bacterial colonies were then transferred into new nutrient agar that contains high concentrations of antibiotics s or t as shown in the flow diagram in figure 5.1 so here the samples of bacteria are collected from the kitchen they spread across the surface of the agar plate then the agar plate one is incubated for 24 hours at 30 degrees celsius bacteria is then transferred to three different agar plates agar plate two three and four agar plate two has no antibiotic agar plate two has antibiotic s and agar plate four has antibiotic t then the bacteria is transferred to a growth medium and incubated for 24 hours this bacterial solution is transferred to agar plate 5 and this agar plate 5 has antibiotic s which is the same antibiotic used over here um, agar plate 6 has antibiotic t which is the same antibiotic that agar plate 4 was treated with over here so our first question asks us to explain the appearance of agar plates 3 and 4 so agar plates 3 and agar plate 4 well that is pretty straightforward as we can see here there's a lot of colonies of bacteria um, in here are a lot fewer colonies of bacterium compared to our control over here and that is due to the fact that these bacteria petri dishes are impregnated with antibiotics so the antibiotics are inhibiting the growth of the bacteria on these two plates however we can see here that some of the bacteria um, are resistant to the antibiotics um, and this is we, we know this because of the presence of the colonies of bacteria if none were resistant to the bacteria all the bacteria would have been killed but since there is some bacteria that are resistant to these antibiotics they are still growing over there then the question asks us explain why many bacterial colonies were found on agar plates five and six so these are our agar plates five and six and the reason why there's just so many bacterial colonies is that the resistant bacteria over here was uh, cultured in these mediums and then put back on a agar plate with an antibiotic that they are resistant to so over here we see that these bacteria are resistant to these two um, antibiotics and now these resistant bacteria were cultured grown and then they were put back on petri dishes with the same bacteria that they are oh, the same antibiotic that they are resistant to thus the antibiotic didn't affect them at all and they just continued to multiply d gonorrhea is a sexually transmitted disease it is caused by the bacterium nasseria gonorrhea many strains of this bacteria cannot be treated by common antibiotics so the question asks us to explain how strains of antibiotic resistant bacteria are formed and then spread well antibiotic resistant bacteria form 
by mutations and these mutations often change uh, the protein production that of the bacteria so the bacteria might start producing a protein that makes it resistant towards a certain antibiotic or mutations in the genetic information or the DNA of bacteria can result in um, developing a resistance because then the cell the DNA is what contains all the instructions of the cell so the, a, a mutation in the DNA might result in the bacteria producing a stronger cell wall for example which doesn't allow the antibiotic to work this is how the antibiotic resistant bacteria are formed now we need to take a look at how they are spread well in this case the gonorrhea is a sexually transmitted disease so the bacteria is spread through sexual intercourse strains of antibiotic resistant bacteria can also this the strains can also spread because bacteria can pass on the genetic information that allows them to be resistant to other bacteria through the process of conjugation. Bacteria spread further through um, blood contact or bodily fluids. For example, if people share needles or contaminated water. All right, guys, that's it for today. Good luck with the studying and go and get those good marks.